So work on the greenhouse continues, and in this episode, I'll be building and installing some shelving. Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel. This is the fifth episode in the post and beam greenhouse build series. With the structure essentially complete, it's time to think about shelving, a workspace, electrical lighting, and water. Since the end of episode four, I've run a plastic conduit in under the foundation and up the back wall. So far, I've added one outlet for the fan on the north gable end. And I'll add more outlets and lights very soon and cover that in a future video. I've also roughed in a water line on the other corner of the north wall, and I'll be adding a counter and sink and a hose bib or tap for irrigation timers and drip lines. Under this gravel floor, I have drain lines to stop irrigation runoff water from pooling here. And our sink drain will tie into that line to move water away from the greenhouse. More on all of that in future episodes as well. So today, I'll focus on building some shelves. The first set I've installed behind me. Here's my design and how they go together. The upper and lower shelves are attached to and supported by the wall studs. The lower shelf is built in two sections and sits on three brackets. The brackets are made from 2x3s and are lag bolted to the 2x4 studs. I wanted the shelves here to be simple to build and attach, easy to remove or relocate, and not to need any legs. I wanted the space under the lower shelf to be completely clear. And these two sections of the shelf are secured to the studs with screws. The upper narrow shelf is made in one piece and has four simple angled brackets. And it's also screwed to the stud wall along its back edge. On top of these shelves, I've added a steel wire mesh or grid if you like. This will allow water to drain from the pots and also let light through. This heavy metal grid is similar to a barbecue grill in its wire thickness and weight. Thin cedar slats would also work for this instead of the wire mesh. I picked up a stack of 2x3s and 2x4s, and I'll start cutting and building the shelving in my shop. These are standard SPF kiln-dried framing lumber. Cedar would be ideal, but I didn't have anything this size on hand. I decided to cut and assemble the parts for the shelves like modules, that I could then quickly take out to the greenhouse and hang on the walls, instead of building the shelves on site. With the best lumber I could find, I'll start cutting the parts on my miter saw. I happen to have a 12 inch compound sliding miter saw, but to build these shelves, a saw this size is definitely not required. I made a drawing of the shelves in SketchUp, and you can download those two pages from my website, manabouttools.com, if you like. Link in the upper right and in the description below. I'm starting with the three brackets for the lower shelf. The brace that runs between the horizontal and vertical 2x3s has a 30 degree angle on one end and a 60 on the other. And those first two pieces also have a 30 degree chamfer cut on the end of each. On the upper corner of my bench, I attach two strips of plywood at 90 degrees. This will make stops to hold the brace pieces at right angles while I assemble them. To support the angled brace piece of the shelf bracket, I attached a half inch thick piece of particle board to the bench top. This will lift the brace piece so it's centered as it's lying on its side. Next I'll add some pencil lines for my screw locations. I set my combination square to half the 2x3 width. You could really just eyeball these, it's not critical. I like to drill pilot holes with a 1 8 bit, even though I'll be using self-drilling GRK screws for assembly. I just find it pulls the parts tighter together this way. And I'll add some exterior wood glue at the mating surfaces. Now I've been criticized in other videos for using glue on end grain like this. I know it doesn't add much additional strength to the joint, but it does seal the gap, if there is any, and should help prevent water from seeping into the end grain of the wood. So for that alone, I'll keep adding glue for all this assembly. And I'm using number 9 by 2.5 inch GRK screws to assemble these brackets and the upper and lower shelves.
To attach these brackets to the studs in the greenhouse, I'll use some 5 16 by 4 inch GRK washer head lag screws. I'll drill two pilot holes in the bracket now. The upper pilot hole on a slight angle, so my driver and bit will clear the angle brace. Now I'll cut some 2x3s for the cross members of the bottom shelf. And the front edge of the shelf is a 2x4. I decided to make this unsupported front edge thicker to reduce any sag that we might get with a loaded shelf. This 2x4 is cut to length, then taken to the bandsaw to have two additional cuts on each end. This is so the front edge sits at the same level as the 2x3s, and I like the look. A jigsaw could also be used to make these cuts, or even a handsaw. I can now lay out these pieces of the lower shelf on the bench. I also have a 45 degree brace for each corner. I marked and drilled pilot holes, then I started to screw in each of these. Then add glue and screw it all together. And the stops on the bench helped me keep everything square as I went along. And finally those two corner braces were added. Then the final missing screws on the front, those holes were covered by my plywood stops. The bottom shelf is built in two four foot long sections. This was to make assembly and placement of the shelf easier for me. The upper shelf is made in one eight foot long section as it's only 12 inches wide. I can now lay these pieces on the bench and get ready for assembly. And like the lower shelf, I marked, then drilled pilot holes, started the screws, added glue, then methodically screwed it all together. This upper shelf has four braces to support it. I'll cut those now on the miter saw. A 30 degree cut on one end, then a 60 on the other. And I can use a small speed square to mark these before cutting. The 30 degree cut end will be attached to the underside of one of the shelf cross members and the other end will be screwed to a stud in the greenhouse. I used a drill block for the hole in the 60 degree cut end. I made a cross with pencil on this angled cut, then held the drill block in place to drill the pilot hole. And this was easy to do as there's a large flat spot for the drill guide and the hole was perpendicular to the face. For the other end, I would need to angle the pilot hole. To help with this, I made my own improvised drill guide. I first drilled a hole with the drill block through a short piece of 2x3. Then on the miter saw, I cut the block at a 30 degree angle. Pencil marks on this block helped me line things up. And this worked well enough. It got my pilot hole in roughly the spot I wanted to attach this brace. And I can then countersink those pilot holes to allow for the screw head. Now I'll apply some glue and run in a number 10 by 4 inch screw. And I'll check that placement with a framing square. 
I'll repeat those steps for the remaining three braces. I did decide to add an additional screw at this location to keep the brace from rotating while the glue was setting up. In the greenhouse, I'll measure and mark a level line for the edge of the upper shelf. I used a straight 2x3 for this. It was pretty bright in there and difficult to see my laser level. This alternative worked just fine though. At this mark, I'll attach two temporary cleats to support the upper shelf. I set it in place and drive screws through the rear horizontal 2x3 and into the cedar wall studs. I used more of the 4-inch screws for this. After checking level, I'll drive screws through the braces and into the studs. Now I can get ready to attach the lower shelf brackets. I'll mark their upper edge, then run in the 5 16 lag bolts with my impact driver. And I'll check that each bracket is plumb as I attach them. Now I can lay the two lower shelf sections over these brackets. Like the upper shelf, screws are run in through the rear 2x3 and into each stud. And a screw is also run up from under the bracket into a cross member of the shelf. And Marilyn came over to see how they looked. Wow, those are really nice looking. Yeah, and then the uh, metal grate right on top. Uh, the grate for the top I have to cut yet, but... I like it. I really like it. Yeah. They're pretty scooping. They're, yeah. pretty, they're a lot more solid than I thought they'd be. But then when you think about the dirt that's going to be up there. Yeah. Um. And since they're hanging off the wall, I didn't want them to be too heavy. So as light as I could. Nice. Good yeah. job, baby. Good. Now we can lay a section of the wire mesh over the frame. I'll need to add a few screws and large flat washers to hold the metal grid in place, and to flatten it as well. These 18 by 48 inch wire mesh pieces were left in our back field by the previous owners, so I was happy to recycle them for this use. Wow, that's good. Cool. Yeah, then you don't catch on it when you come by, so yeah. it should just, yeah. should just make it go low. No. And then... How does this, this does not go up? No, um, because it would run into this one. So but you were going just, to do that? Yeah, just a few screws will pull it off. Okay. Yeah. So you changed your, your mind on I that? I changed my mind on that. And yeah. uh, since there's only a few screws and it's wall mounted, it should be easy to remove. My original design had the shelves on hinges so they could fold up and be stored against the wall. And then the braces, also on hinges, could fold in. But the lower shelf would then run into the upper shelf, so its brace design would need to be rethought. So it just made sense to simplify everything and just use screws. And if the shelves needed to be removed, it would still only take a few minutes. The top one, I just need to take one of these, take one of these and cut it exactly along this line here. Yeah. So to be a shorter one, but it'd be metal on top. Oh, right, right, too. right. So yeah. you so you keep uh, that one piece solid. Yeah, and it spins around, so it's the double one up front here. Yeah. yeah. And then the other one over here. Do you have another grate somewhere? I do. We'll grab it and put it on. We'll see what it looks like together. Yeah, I just have to get some screws of thick washers to hold the corners down. This is the rustiest one. All right. Well, They're going to get rusty. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, that lines up nicely. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. It's beautiful. I like it.
I can use a cutoff blade on my angle grinder to trim down a mesh panel for the narrow upper shell. And I'll run the blade along this edge to remove any sharp burrs. I'm happy with how this first set of shelves went together, so I'll make more and add them next to the east wall. This Post and Beam Greenhouse series has generated a ton of comments and questions, and I think I need to do a video answering some of the most common ones. A lot of you have asked how much this greenhouse costs to build, so I'll try to tackle that question as well. So be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when that's released. Thanks for watching, leave me your thoughts or questions below, and we'll see you next time.